Hello, everyone. We're excited to welcome you to EduCraftCon, a free online webinar for educators by educators. This online conference is hosted and co-moderated by Aludo with their CEO, Damon, here with us today, and myself as the CEO of ClassTime. Aludo and ClassTime decided to partner in establishing a series of webinar sessions where educators can share their experience and their craft with other educators for free. So in this 45-minute webinar, we, um, we will be recording everything and we will share it with you after. So um, you'll get an email and if you can't stay for the entire time or you wanna share it with any of your colleagues, um, you're free to do so. Um, I'd also um, highly encourage you to um, use the chat on the right-hand side, ask questions, comment on things to make this as engaging as possible. Um, and then Sue will try to answer all questions during or after the presentation. Thank you, Valentin. Um, hi, my name is Damon Torgerson, as Valentin mentioned, and uh, I'm also excited for you to be here joining us today at, at, at EduCraftCon. And we've got really great speakers and none better than Sue Thoughts. Um, Sue is going to share uh, how to use technology to enhance relationships today and a little quick background on Sue. So Sue is the Senior Program Manager for Common Sense Education. Um, in 2011, she began working with Common Sense in Chicago uh, by partnering with educators and parents to help them create a culture where students use technology in a meaningful, thoughtful, and respectful way. Um, and that's just a, a quick byline. It really doesn't speak uh, fairly to Sue. Uh, she and I have had several conversations, and she has a wealth of information on, on how to use digital citizenship, how to use technology safely in the classroom. Um, she moved to Los Angeles in 2014 and has been working with Common Sense Education since. She provides keynotes, professional development workshops, conference presentations, and consulting with districts across Southern California. Um, I believe she was on a webinar uh, earlier this morning working with one of those districts in Murrieta Valley. Um, so she is uh, definitely a great resource and we're really excited to have her. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Sue. Sue, welcome and thank you very much. Thank you, Damon. I think Marietta Valley is supposed to be uh, attending here today. So, um, so maybe we'll, we'll see them in the chat. Um, yeah, thank you so much. It's very awkward to sit there and listen to somebody talk about you for, <laughs> for a couple minutes, but thank you. Um, so today, yes, indeed, we're going to be focusing on uh, the importance of social emotional learning and how to use technology and why using technology to enhance relationships is going to be really important in the classroom. Um, I'm going to just once again reiterate, you know, that I'm the program manager for Common Sense Education here in the Los Angeles region. I've been with Common Sense since about 2011. So it's, it's been a long time, partly in Chicago again, and, and then here in Los Angeles. And um, if you're not familiar with Common Sense, we're a national nonprofit organization. And one of the things that we do is um, we do a lot, especially for teachers around digital citizenship. So, you know, your presence online, online culture, and really trying to teach our kids how to make sure that they uh, exhibit the values that we want them to have when they are in the online spaces, right? So, so that's a lot of what I do with Common Sense Education. Um, and I am also a parent. I have a couple of kids now. They are 12 and 15. I'm looking at their at their bedrooms and um, they're at school right now. So, so as a parent, I use a lot of the Common Sense Media resources as well. So, um, so that's a little bit about Common Sense and some of the ratings. We also rate and review all kids media and everything that we do, everything I'm gonna show you today, um, related to common sense um, or any of our tools are, are free. So um, let's begin with a little story um, about why I am interested in this topic and why it's something that I even started thinking about uh, a couple of years ago. So um, I was asked by our friends here in one of these local districts to come in and talk about the value of bringing technology to the classroom. They were trying to get a huge, um, you know, get money, right, for their large initiative that they had trying to bring technology to classrooms. And they had asked me, um, a person who is, you know, I'm not a vendor, I'm not somebody who is coming in to sell anything, I have nothing to gain by them spending all this money on technology. So they wanted me to come in as a person from Common Sense to advocate for the use of technology in classrooms and why we should be spending this money. And so I went in with my little speech 
and I was all prepared to talk about the value of technology in the classroom. But the woman who spoke before me in the public public comments, she she shared this story. So I'm going to show you a clip of what this is the actual woman who spoke before me. So let me share with you what she said. Yes, they do in a classroom the revise than they do in a classroom. The research has been massive since five years ago, and that is really where it happens with the teacher interactions collaboration cooperation with students building projects together if they were going to put my grandchild in front of a computer to learn the basic skills reading and math and sit in front of a computer i would cash in my 401k or whatever and put her in private school or do homeschooling you i'm not going to have my grandchild sit in front of a computer all day <laughs> we tested it. It was working. Let's see if we can try that one more time because it's kind of important. They do in a classroom. The advice that they do in a classroom. The research. Let me know if you guys have any advice. We were able to see oh. it. Education is not going to happen on an iPad or a Chromebook. Kids could do not learn the same way on a device than they do in a classroom. The research has been massive since five years ago. And that is really where it happens with the teacher, interactions, collaboration, cooperation with students, building projects together. If they were going to put my grandchild in front of a computer to learn the basic skills, reading and math, and sit in front of a computer, I would cash in my 401k or whatever and put her in private school or do homeschooling. You, I'm not going to have my grandchild sit in front of a computer all day. So she just finished up by saying, this is not for me. This is not for my grandchildren. If you give them this money, I'm pulling my grandchild out of here, right? I do not want technology in my classroom. So, um, so I'm going to ask you, right? Tell me a little bit about, you know, and I'm going to remind you that we are in a public forum here. You are going to be a good digital citizen. Tell me a little bit about what your reaction to that video was, right? So I'm going to share my screen here, and I'm going to ask you to put your um, reaction into this menti. So if you could, um, let's see. Can you guys see my menti? Yeah, we're good. Can you see it? Can you see my screen or no? Yeah. So this is the Mentimeter, and I'm asking you to, to share your reaction. You go to menti.com, and you can do this on your phone. You can do this on your device. Open another window and put in the code 724113. No spaces or anything. It's just... Um, so tell me about what's your reaction when you see, uh, yeah, yep. And I just want to know, like, you know, in your words, what do you think of this? Yeah, and so, so I think, you know, a lot of times when I show this video, I get the same kinds of things, right? This woman is, is um, she's holding on to something, right? She's kind of, a, she's afraid or she's afraid of taking a risk in some way, she's outdated. Um, and then some people also say things like, like, oh, she's, she's got a closed mindset. Or sometimes people say, ah, oh, I think it's kind of a little bit true, right? She, you know, she some, I somewhat agree with the things that she says. So I get a variety of different things. You know what I really like? I see that in, in my, like I can see that there's way more people out there who are watching in a group, I think, than are being um, represented in our webinar numbers here. So I know some folks are out there watching in a group. So thank you so much for putting in your reactions because everybody's allowed to just do, I think just do one at this point. So yeah, valid for some and not all, risk adverse, certainly. Extreme makes sense, right? So some of you agree with her and some of you do not agree with her. Okay, so I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna to go to my presentation materials and I'm gonna see how we can do this, yes. So, so I will show you my reaction. Okay, this is me like, I'm getting ready to go up there, this woman goes up there and she shares her idea and then 
I, you know, these were my, these are my gifs. Like at first I was so angry. Like, what is this woman doing? Sabotaging my, my whole presentation that I was going to do. And then I also was like feeling very defensive, right? My role is bringing in technology to enlighten these kids and to make them have a better educational experience. So I was very defensive. Has this woman not been in a, in a good classroom lately? Like, where is she? Where does she get off? Right. So that's my thought. And then I just stopped for a second and I said, what if she is right? Right. Just like a lot of you, I'm sure, you know, some of you have seen bad use of technology in the classroom. And you have seen technology being used in ways that that is just as she's describing, right? Where there is a lack of relationships, there is a lack of of use in ways that enhances what's supposed to be going on in there, right? And so I thought back to my experience um, as the parent of a second grade kid, and I had, you know, I had these these tiny. So this is this is my daughter and my my son. So when my daughter was in second grade. Um, my first experience with education technology was with this tool called Raz Kids. And with, I don't, many of you might be familiar with Raz Kids, and I'm not saying this to knock Raz Kids, but as a parent, because obviously we like it at Common Sense, we gave it a review of four stars, and we say it's great for level reading, and it's, it's a good tool for sure. But as a parent, when I was told to put my daughter on a computer for an hour a day after school and make her do this platform, like I was like, oh, I do not want, my, I want to engage with my child after school. I want to read with her real books and have conversations. I do not want my daughter to be stuck on a device doing this. And so to me, um, this is what I imagined that she's doing all day in her classroom with education technology. And then are you asking me seriously to bring her home and have her do this again at home in this isolated environment where she is just being fed by the computer, like that was my vision of what ed tech is. And when I talk to parents now, I still think that this is the pervasive view of what education technology is in classrooms. And so when I talk to teachers and when I talk to you know um, districts about how to engage with parents, it is really about one, how to use technology in ways that, that really enhances this relationship, really enhances the pedagogy, but then you need to be teaching your parents about how their students are learning in your classroom and what that feels like and what that is to your students so your families can experience that. Because otherwise, this is what they think technology is doing in their classrooms. So if this is what's going on in your classrooms, okay, that's a whole other conversation. We need, to, we need to back up, right? Because this should not be the extent of what's going on with your tech. But parents have the perception oftentimes that this is what's going on with your tech. So I just want to reiterate what this woman said in the video. Um, she, she really said, um, I wonder if I can get to that this. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Close this. Okay. So what she said was, you know, this is her quote. She said, education is not going to happen on an iPad, but what she really, but the, the meat of what she said is this is where it happens with a teacher interactions, collaboration, cooperation with students, building projects together. That is the heart of a classroom. And I think that we can use technology to really enhance that, to, to collaborate, to interact, and to build projects together. And that is what I want to talk about today. And I want to change the image <laughs> of education technology with our families and really do that much more. And so the reason that I was so adamant about this is because I had just visited the classroom of a good friend of mine, Leticia Citizen. She's at Citizen Dowels on Twitter. And her fifth grade classroom, at that time was a wealth of social emotional learning. And she was one to one. And she showed, she just put on display this most you know, amazing day. I was only in her classroom for a little bit, but the heart of her classroom was social emotional learning, even though, and especially because of the fact that they were one to one. And so when she's talking about social emotional learning, you know, I just wanna bring in the definition, you know, the pro, the, from Castle, the process by which children and adults acquire and effectively apply knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve goals, show empathy, positive relationships, and responsible decisions, right? That's what we're talking about here. How do you manage those emotions in a way that is positive, that brings you closer to other people? And at Common Sense here on the right, you see these are the social emotional characteristics, the, the topics that we cover, um, because we really believe that this is the foundation of good digital citizenship. So we talk a lot about social emotional learning and the connection to the way that we make good decisions, the ways that, like, digital citizenship is all about relationships. 
It's about the ways that we relate to each other through the medium of technology. And so the foundation of which is really about the way that we control our, our emotions and the way that we relate to each other socially. So when I talk about you know, th this stuff, when I say integrity, I mean taking responsibility for your feelings and actions. Compassion is about, it's not just the empathy part, like confronted with another's suffering, you are also motivated to act to relieve that suffering. Humility is not regarding others as more special or better than yourself. You know, gratitude is appreciation, appreciation of the benefits we receive from others and the desire to reciprocate, right? So these are very specific character traits that we really wanna bring out in our kids. And so through technology, how can we maybe help to make our students, so that's my student at the center, better have a better relationship with their classmates, with their teacher, with their family at home, and with other students around the world. So these are just four examples of groups that I want to talk about today. And, um, and really, you know, I want you guys to think about, you know, ways that you can infuse this into your classrooms. So we'll begin by thinking about that relationship with the teacher and how to use technology to, to enhance that relationship. And so, you know, I already showed you one kind of thing, right? Using student response tools to hear from every single one of your students. Get to know your students and elicit responses from them in ways that you never could without the technology, right? In my traditional classroom where we don't have tech, I have to very intentionally speak and connect with each one of my students and make sure that I hear from all of them, right, by all raising their hands and maybe they're not all comfortable raising their hands, maybe they're not all comfortable talking out loud. But in this way, how do I give multiple avenues to my students when it comes to hearing them express themselves and making an opportunity for us to connect and understand each other, right? So using a student response tool, I just use Menti today, right? I know we have, I wanted to hear your opinion about that. That was a very quick way for me to get a sense of where you're at. And so, you know, there's all kinds of tools that are out there. I used, you know, I used Pear Deck today with our, our um, MBUSD folks, right? Or, you know, there's all kinds of student response tools that are out there, even if, you know, you're using Seesaw to have them create their own portfolios. How do you have your students, you, buy, you can ask them open-ended questions, right? And elicit their curiosity. You can have them, oh, I love Pear Deck. You can have them share their wonders, right? What do you wonder about when it comes to, you know, for example, I could ask, I was gonna ask you guys on the mentee to share with me, what's your curiosity about that lady in the video, right? What do you wonder about where she comes from? What do you think? What do you think she's thinking about when she says all that, right? So I can ask you questions to, to help you. I wanna push you into being curious. I want you to be a person who asks a lot of questions and I wanna know what your questions are. So, um, and then of course these students, you guys can express that with anonymity. And I can give you a variety of methods by which you can maybe draw your answers or type your answers or do a flip grid and say your answers to a camera, right? How can I give you as many avenues as I can give you so that you can express your ideas to me? And then of course, I wanna thank you all for participating in that and giving me those answers, right? I have to express my gratitude for your willingness to share with me. Right, so try to model that gratitude with them all the time. And of course, when they are anonymous, they might have more courage. When you ask them about their questions, they might have more curiosity. And then it's just practicing good communication. So I hope that's like you and teacher, like student and teacher. How do you use that tech to enhance that relationship? So hope that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna take a breath. Are you guys okay? You guys good? We're okay. good. I've got I've got a quick question. Just just throwing it out there. How do you do? You, how do you balance anonymity with with a, with like safety and that sort of thing rep, with it's reputation? It's a huge issue on the internet. So it is huge. So um, one thing that I would say is like in our classroom, that's a little walled garden, right? If I'm using a tool like like Pear Deck or if I'm using Menti or something, and somebody says something inappropriate, right? If I have Pear Deck, I, I actually know if I'm, I I know who it was because I can they might see themselves as anonymous in the projection, but on the back end they've all signed in and I know who they are. So if but something like a mentee, you know, let's say something gets up there, isn't that a perfect opportunity to have a conversation about you know right now that just is within the walls of my classroom as opposed to the things that they're saying out loud to the greater world that can have an impact on them, you know, in a greater way. So you're practicing good digital citizenship in the classroom 
and you're giving them opportunities to put it in, into action right there. When things screw up, boom, that's your teaching opportunity right there. Very cool. Very cool. And yeah, it's embarrassing as a teacher, but you know, like think about having that conversation and and really talking about why a student feels the need to do this, or you know, maybe you need to have some control and gradually release that. You know, um, so yeah, I do a whole presentation on like social media and the ways that you can like ramp up your kids to, you know, to get into the wider world. So yeah, good question. Um, so then when it comes to them and their classmates, this was my favorite thing that Leticia did in her classroom. And I'm gonna show you a picture of her classroom. She um, had her students using creation tools, using technology for, for quick works that her students could share with each other. So as opposed to like, you know, art and you're pulling out all the stuff in art and you know, like how can we create a quick photo and do an edit and then share that idea with another kid, right? How do we use technology to, to think about ways that like when students make something and then they share it with somebody else, they're a lot more invested in that creation than just like, tell me the five ways you see these characters, you know, relating to each other or whatever, and then have a conversation about that. Like, like when it's something that's not personal to them, it might be harder to share those opinions because those could be wrong, right? But when I make something, so if we were all together in the same room, I'd have you pull out your phones and pull out your photo, like pull out a photo from the last, you know, 10 photos and share that with somebody right in the classroom that we're all in together and i'd have you all you know sharing something that you made on your phone with somebody else and you see how that strengthens relationships between each other so this is what she did in her classroom this is leticia she used google draw and we were doing a lesson about um, stereotypes about gender stereotypes in her classroom and she had her students draw an, like an avatar of a girly girl and a, and a manly man right and when her students are drawing it they were totally getting into this you know to their to their drawings and then when they were done they paired up with somebody else and she had a very strict protocol about how to share and it was like okay for like she she I, they identified by like you know who lives furthest away who who is older who has longer hair like she picked like she like named it and so there's no time spent you know dilly dallying about who's going to go first first person you know goes for one minute and the other person is a really good listener how do you model that good listening right so her students are modeling good listening by you know your body language and by being quiet and by you know like really being an attentive listener so she is explicitly saying how do you be a good model you know of a listener and how do you share how do you be a good communicator and so she is teaching those skills right there in that classroom with that pairing while they're developing relationships with each other all at the same time and this, you know, and it's, and it's relevant to the lesson that they're doing, right? This is not rocket science. These are fifth graders. And it was so fun. You should see how lively those kids are. Um, so I was going to, well, I think this is going to get messy. So I'm going to, I'm going to skip this one. If we were in real life, I would totally have you do this and, and photo share. But I was going to have you do the mentee. I don't know. And I was going to have you share what it is that you created. I think we could do it. But you guys tell me. Okay. You tell me. Um, I'm going to pull out the, um, the mentee. And I am going to ask you to, to share with us. Let's try this. All right, we're going to try it. We're going to try it in the classroom. You tell me what is the last thing that you created. So you can either put it down here in the chat if you want to use the chat. But I know we have some other folks that are not in here. So I'm going to have you put it in the mentee. So tell me. Oops, did I do that right? Can you guys see? I'm sorry. Did I do the wrong screen? I did the wrong screen, didn't I? Application. You've got, you've got a mentee here. You see the mentee? Yep. Okay, so tell us the last thing that you created. And I don't know how this is gonna pop up in my space here, what this is gonna look like. Can you guys see so, so if I hide my image, oh. So tell, like, like I wanna know, somebody created an invitation, right? Probably an invitation for a party. And what I would love if, if you know, I just want to hear it like this is like who, how does that relate to who you are if you're telling me about like the invitation oh my goodness somebody's creating a video game seriously wow. that is so cool creating or adding a quizlet quiz right you're not just taking the old stock one creating dinner right dinner you're feeding your family you're feeding yourself you're making something nourishing right i created a snack for my kids i love the variety of the creations that you guys are making and what i really love is to hear your voice behind it and get to know who you are baby kate 
<laughs> created a baby gate, right? Brownies, a slide, a video from my wife. You're so nice. Um, sticky chicken wings. <laughs> Tags for succulents for our volunteer bouquet. Very nice. A maze. Who creates a maze? I hope that was a real life like labyrinth. Um, going on Chrome Music Lab. I, if I could hear your voices in this room, I mean, obviously, I, I can't. I can't ask everybody to do this the same way. But isn't that just fun? Like, think about us all being in the same room and sharing, like, your personality through your creation. Right, you just get a lot more animated than than if you're just talking about your schoolwork, right? Related to your schoolwork, but it's about your personal creation. So, all right. Well, that was fun. That was cool. <laughs> I just like to see a glimpse into your life. Great. Yeah. All right. Good enough for me. Um, so when we do that, you know, when you create that authentic work, of course, we're always trying to infuse creativity into our kids' lives, into our students' lives, and then of course, you know, when kids share about themselves, they create that empathy with each other in that classroom and you're just you're just getting them a lot closer to each other and then when you use Leticia's structured pair and share you know the way that she does it those people like me who like blah 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 like dominate right you need to get us to shut up and stop and listen and make sure we're not dominating that time so she creates that structure so that I can just be quiet and listen to my partner. And my partner has a chance and an opportunity to share one-on-one -on -one with me. So, you know, thinking about bringing those shy kids out just a little bit to present on, you know, to one other person, like how are you increasing their skills, right? How are you giving a little more self-control to your student who loves to just jabber, jabber, right? I need to learn a little self-control and be quiet sometimes. All right, so um, moving on. There are just a couple of like little pieces when it comes to relationships to families that I thought were just genius um, and I thought were really great. Uh, one of these teachers, uh, the, the, so I went to a Ditch That Textbook session at ISTE last year and um, there were a couple of things that really hit me when it comes to communicating with families. They talked about parent communication and you know, giving parents and kids an opportunity through technology to relate to each other. And so Tara Martin, if you don't know Tara Martin, she's a dream boat, she's an author, and she, um, she said something about you know, using technology to amplify the realness, right? The realness and the connection between the kids and the parents. And she talks about you know, using that all the time, written a great book. So here was what Raina Freeman, who was on the panel, she showed this, this slide where she you know, had her, her fifth grade classroom. I don't know why we're on fifth grade again. She had a fifth grade classroom and then on parent night, she had all the parents come in and you know, sit down at their kid's desk and their kids had all created a flip grid for each of their parents, right? So you go in, you find your kid's face and you watch the video that your kid has created for you about his or her hopes for the fifth grade. What does your kid hope for for the fifth grade? Right? As a parent, I would just cry the whole entire time, I'm sure. And then you make the parent turn around and respond to the child. And you show them how to create a short video message back to your kid sharing your hopes for their year. Right? Look, at, I'm gonna, I have like goosebumps just thinking about this, right? How can you ask parents questions between them and their kids that get them closer together. We as parents don't take the time to ask these deep questions a lot of times, right? We're so busy and we don't take the time to like stop and ask about their hopes and dreams sometimes or ask about, you know, maybe they don't take the time to ask us questions about the things, the ways that we feel as parents. And so if you're a teacher who creates that relationship between a parent and their kids, you are going to be forever loved. Like that, that is going to be amazing when you help parents and kids connect through homework or through, through using Flipgrid and you teach parents how to have that conversation, right? That is the stuff that I think is like golden. And I would love to be able to see teachers doing that with their students um, to create that bond between parents and their kids. Right. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say about that is that, you know, you're really facilitating that relationship. You're really creating that student created content. And then when you, you don't have to worry about language either, because hopefully, you know, your kids are going to be creating in the language that their parents speak. They are going to have more empathy for their parents. Your parents who are freaked out about recording a message will have more empathy for their own kid who like they know that it's scary to maybe put themselves out there as well. And then hopefully there's a little bit more gratitude and communication between those parents and kids. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. So, so I have kids and I'd be thrilled.
What's that, David? You want to say something? No, no, I'm just, 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 it's good. This is, this no, is fantastic. I think it's great. Okay, really cool. cool ideas. And the last one that I think is really great that I, I keep, and I hope people are already doing this, but man, using platforms to create relationships and help your students connect with the wider world, right? I grew up in central Illinois where I, I had I lived in a very tiny town of a thousand people, and the only way that I connected to other citizens around the world is through television, right? Television or movies. I didn't really have a strong connection or an understanding of like real relationships with other people. And I think when you connect kids with the world through using these classroom tools, you facilitate a relationship with with another kid who has a totally different perspective and a lot of the same perspective on the world. And I think that is just pure magic. That is magic when you help kids relate to somebody else who, who lives in another part of the world. And so there are all kinds of tools out there. Empatico is one, um, so empatico.org, and I have links to all these tools at the end. Pen Pal School, so this one is for kids like ages six to 11. Pen Pal Schools is like grades three through 12. Mystery Skype, anybody can, you know, is a little bit less formal. And then Grid Pals with, with Flipgrid, like you can do those connections as well. So these are great platforms. If you're like, I don't know where to get started, those are great ways to help you figure out how to connect with another classroom around the world. And I just pulled a couple of piece to, um, screenshots off of Twitter with these students who are, you know, getting ready to, you know, they're middle schoolers who are connecting through Grid Pals, right? Or look at how happy these kids are talking to another set of kids somewhere around the world. Like, you know, it can be as formal as like with Pen Pal, there's a full curriculum there. With Empatico, you know, it's really about creating a connection around experience, right? Mystery Skype has its own set of questions. And, you know, if you ask any teacher who's doing these, they'd be happy to share their wonderful experiences because most of the time, you know, it's, it's great to see. Their kids get so excited. They love connecting with other kids and sharing their own experiences as well as learning about what else is going on. So with all of that, you are building these relationships, you're learning about other cultures, you're providing that world perspective that I think uh, kids just really need. And then you're developing that compassion, you know, for another group of people, that humility and understanding that you as an American, you know, are not be all end all, and you don't have monopoly on all good things, right? And then, you know, or you don't have it so bad, maybe, perhaps, right? It just offers you a different perspective. And then, of course, you're just going to start sparking that curiosity and helping kids understand that there is a huge world out there, and we are so excited to launch you into it, right? We're so excited to, to share it with you. So, um, you know, so those are the four areas that I just really wanted to focus on today when it comes to using tech to really connect your students and enhance those relationships and build those SEL skills all along the way. Because, you know, when it comes to, to your students, of course, I always think about this, like they learn best from, you know, you learn best from those that you love, right? And if you have a good relationship with your peers in your classroom, with your teacher, with your family, like building those, those relationships is, is something that a teacher can really do to help your students learn generally, right? Not just from you, the teacher, but also from everybody else around them. So, um, so I'm gonna just pause there. <laughs> and, hey, Leticia joined us. Get out of here. She's in here. She's in the chat. She, she must have heard me talking about her. Um, so, thank you all. Um, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna take any questions anybody has. You can always catch me on Twitter or there's my email as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and I've got some questions here. I'm gonna ramp up for you just one second, and I'll let others jump in. Thanks, Linda. I don't think I breathed through the entire thing. I just love talking about this. Can <laughs> we can see that, but it's great. I know. I don't get to talk about it enough. I did this as a as a keynote last year, last summer, and mm -hmm. I spent all summer just asking everybody about their examples and the things that they did with their kids and just gathering information. And there's, you know, I mean, that's not that's not the complete list by all means. Like there's so much stuff. Oh, I know what I was gonna do. Here, let me show you guys this. I was gonna share this with you. All the air, I kind of made this on Google Draw where I just, I made a hyper drawing where I, like there's the tiny URL there. So if you were wondering about any of the resources that I, that I talked about or anything, 
there's um, there's some articles listed in there about like formative assessment and then maybe tools like Flipgrid and you know and Nearpod and Seesaw and there's just you know just some little tidbits some ideas for how to get started maybe doing some of these ideas so you can access that Google drawing and um, and those are all hyperlinks to those tools or to the um, to the review of those tools at Common Sense. And we can share this this deck out. You can share this deck out, yeah, by all means. Perfect. We will, we will do so. We'll make it available. Um, one question that we had uh, that that we had we asked people to ask questions when they registered. So I've got a couple of those questions, and one of them is how do I keep class management and academics moving forward on content when social emotional uh, issues arise. That, that is a good question. Um, I, you know, to me, it's really hard to not stop when it comes to social emotional issues in your classroom, right? And I think about things like, you know, how do you, like, same with digital citizenship, same with social emotional learning. How are you kind of addressing that up front in your classroom in a proactive way? So how are you giving everybody an understanding of what our expectations are in the classroom? Because if you don't set that foundation and that baseline for how it is that we relate to each other, both, you know, when I think about SEL in the real world, how do we, you know, how do we relate to each other in the classroom? And then in the digital world, you know, through digital citizenship, how do we use the technology to relate to each other in that space? Like those are basic foundational issues that you, as a teacher need to really be proactive about setting what those expectations are because if you can't do that then moving forward with academics <laughs> or you know that that gets really hindered because you're going to run into those sel roadblocks or you're going to run into those digit roadblocks until you have established what that foundation looks like and what your expectations are it's really hard to you know to be productive in an academic way and part of it is like yes there is a high value on that academic piece and we're being tested on that part but at the same time this sel stuff the relationship stuff the digital citizenship stuff that is incredibly important too right you're not necessarily you know your kids aren't going to be tested on that but it's only in a positive culture that you're able to achieve that academic goal that you are really trying to get at right or else you're just constantly going to be stumbling upon upon those cultural issues it's kind of it's kind of always framed as mutually exclusive. Like you can either do academics or you can do social emotional learning, um, and and you, you know, obviously that's not the case. And and we're holistic students, people, right? It's it's not one thing or the other. So very very nice answer. Another question that that came up, um, and I think I might be staring at it on this slide, is for the for the teacher that's just kind of dipping their toe into this. What are some of the first things that they that they can do to come up to speed, and or you know just do the first few things? What are the first few things a, a new teacher to social emotional learning, maybe an older teacher as well, but a new teacher to to SEL might might take uh, take the first steps towards? Um, well, one thing that I might recommend is um, we have a blog at the Common Sense website, so um, I'm going to pull up the link, um, and of course the, all those resources there. By all means, pick something. You know what I always say is like pick the thing that that seems most easy to you, right? Pick the thing that that you want to change in your classroom. And if it's about like, you know, maybe it is about formative assessment, but if you're, you know, if you're thinking about changing the way that you are interacting with your students, you know, how to use formative assessment with this relationship focus in mind. It's not just about like getting the information from your students, but it's about getting the information from your students so that you can enhance that relationship, right? It's a little bit cyclical it's a little bit it's a it's a way to teach in a in a better way rather than um just so that you can see what you need to be teaching on or just so that you can see what you're going to be you know profit supporting your students in academically how are you using that to maybe build that relationship so i i just posted the social emotional learning um article that we have our blog series that we have um or this one's about self-control but we have a whole set of resources, actually, I'm going to go back and and um, and pull up. These are just easy ways to integrate um, resources related to social emotional learning into the lives of teachers. Here's the more general one. I posted the one about self control, but this one is the more general toolkit related to social emotional learning. So there's some great professional development articles in there, as well as good teaching um, parent resources as well. Um, so that might be a good place to start 
when it comes to some of the resources that we have and the way it all ties together with technology. I didn't even talk about it today. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful answer. <laughs> uh, so in addition to common sense, where are some communities out there? Like, is there a Twitter community? Is there a Twitter chat that, that, that I can join into as a teacher that I can get more information on this? Is it, I mean, obviously I can follow you. You're, you're, you're providing a lot of information, but where else in the community is there for me to get more information? Oh, there is a whole SEL chat, right? And um, CASTLE, which is the collaborative um, on social emotional learning, um, academics and social emotional learning. So CASTLE is a great C-A-S-E-L. Um, that is a great resource um, to, to follow, when it, specifically around social emotional learning. But they do host, um, yeah, I would imagine. I don't know. I never jump into the SEL chat. I'm too busy with the tech chat. I should probably go and live over in that world for a little while. I, I think the thing that I want to say about, I work in the tech area, right? I work with a lot of like the tech directors and the tech teams. And just recently, I've started working into the, um, the school counselor realm and thinking about those people who are really about setting culture and, and teaching a lot of the social emotional learning stuff you know, with their students. And there seems to be this big divide between you know, the tech folks and the counselor folks and the social workers. How is it that we can kind of think about building a team together to address the digital space um, it's not purely just the realm of our tech folks. And, you know, a lot of times our school counselors, they understand a lot of this stuff. So how are we working together as a force within a school to really meet the needs of our students, right? If you're, you're working with, you know, your MTSS teams or your PBIS teams, or if all these acronyms don't make any sense to you, right? We're all kind of doing a lot of that culture setting in our schools when it comes to the ways that we are supporting students. And a lot of the ways that our students are relating to each other is in that tech world. So why aren't we all kind of having a conversation together, you know, and, and bridging forces so that we can have that conversation and make sure we're providing the best foundation for our students, both in the tech space and in the real life space, so that we're, we're all being consistent with their messaging, right? Well, I don't know if I answered your question. I have no idea what your question is. <laughs> I just talked, sorry. What's your favorite milkshake? My favorite milkshake? Uh, <laughs> I was, I'm a chocolate malt fan. I like anything <laughs> malt related. I knew I'd have an answer for that. Well, uh, there's a whole host of, of just great resources here that Sue has shared. I'm going to turn it over to, to Valentin to, to start to wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, everyone, for your interest and also attending uh, throughout the entire webinar. And of course, thank you, Sue, for this amazing presentation. I'm sure everyone loved it. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, you will receive an email with a link to rewatch a recording of this webinar. So you can share it with your colleagues and friends who haven't had the chance to attend today. Um, we will also send out a little survey. It will just take two minutes, but it will really help us to improve in the future for any other webinars that are coming up. So uh, on behalf of Aludo, ClassTime, and EduCraftCon, we really thank you again for your time and look forward to um, engaging with all of you uh, sometime in the near future again. Bye-bye.